Ron Bennington, Fez Watley. I'm Ron, there's Fez. Hiya, buddies. Unless you, you know, somehow got that confused. Which one's Ron and which one's Fez? <laughs> oh, I'm the Fez. That's me. Are they gay? All right, it is the Ron and Fez <laughs> show. Uh, Eastside Dave uh, in here today. Uh, Fezzy, good news for you because I know it's your favorite segment. Coming up a little later on this morning, uh, he'll be doing... Yeah, boy, gossip. Finding out who's with who and all the what for. And also with us today, uh, on music today, throwing in some temps because he's always plays the new independent stuff. It's Earl Black Earl Douglas. How you doing, Earl? Hello, everybody. Earl, you've now uh, taken on the nickname Febreze the Fading Goat. Ah. Uh, <laughs> last night was the was a whole new step for Febreze the Fading Goat. We had a uh, a little dinner meeting with uh, Elo, a chance for us all to become pals again. And uh, during <laughs> the time that we were sitting down, <laughs> Earl somehow at the table in the hearing of hey here's what you guys do right and here's what we wish you would do more of and you know how come ron doesn't answer his phone and are you even interested in your career and all those type of things and oh i thought uh i tried to get a hold of earl before you know it i look over and earl's head is wandering back and forth and finally uh Ends up face first in the uh, mashed potatoes. In the middle of a Manhattan restaurant with management there, upper management, by the way, mm -hmm. sitting there. Earl picks that time to bah! clunk. Well, I think the reason why, Fezzi, it wasn't just like a coincidence that Elo was asking <laughs> questions. Somehow, uh, Earl, what do you do for a living leads to uh, an entrance of Febreze the Fainting Goat. Earl, how do you live with yourself? I don't. <laughs> That's how I do You've it. moved out now? <laughs> you live here. No, I, I, no, what were you telling me this morning, Fez, about Earl? Um, I got here today, and I couldn't find Earl. Sure. And so I went to Dave and Pitsy, and I said, is Earl here yet? Yeah. Because, you know, maybe he's fainted onto the subway track, so we need us another subway hero or something. Uh -huh. So they said, no, he's burrowed into one of the other studios here with the lights out. Right. And has not come out, and no one had seen him. What were you doing hiding in the dark, Earl? No, I'm Dan, what are you doing dancing in the dark? No, I was in the uh, one of the smaller studios because basically that's the only place I can make a phone call and make have some quiet because there's always something going on in our office. Who so. are you even calling? You, your doctor again? Uh, that was one of the calls I made. I made an appointment for Monday afternoon. His vet. Right. Now you've had everything you can possibly do to check out your brain, right? Yeah. Your brain, your body. Everything is in fine shape. I thought so. Other yeah. than sin uh, sinuses, I want you, I want to explain something to you, Earl. It seems to me that this is a little psychosomatic. What is wrong with you? That some amount of stress or loss of control seems to bring on the fainting. I mean, I, I, I I'll admit there's some things that I haven't really dealt with, but the, the, there job. is physical pain involved. I am there's I'm. I'm still a little fuzzy, still a little disoriented. Right. How's that physical pain? I mean, it, it, you know, I still have this throbbing headache that right. won't, will not go away. From? I, I, I That part, I really don't know. But there's other, I mean... Every time there's a stressful situation, Febreze the fainting goat goes down. Anytime you feel loss of control. You know what I honestly think a big part of last night was? A full table of adult foods. <laughs> And I kid you not, you reminded me of like a Hilton sister where suddenly there was a bunch of food in front of everybody. Everyone's eating. You know, you're in a restaurant, not in a little fucking cubby hole, eating your soup and crackers. And that part of what made you queasy. No, I mean, the, I, I loved it. The food was pretty good. And Earl, I how you. old are you? I'm 36. You don't know how to fucking order a steak at age 36. You order a chopped sirloin. And then you're surprised that a hamburger shows up. Well, I was, <laughs> I had like zero appetite, and I'm like, okay, I don't want a steak, but I want something that resembles Bullshit. it. Bullshit! You told us last night you thought it was a steak. It says it. I, it said chop sir. <laughs> well, why? Why would you not say? What is it? Did you want to order a hamburger? Or did you want to order a steak? I mean, and there, and hamburger was on the menu. Fez, why mm -hmm. won't he answer me? 
Why won't Febreze answer? Because he's getting ready to hit the floor again. You know, you don't know. Let the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> Let the bodies hit the floor. Fabrice, did you mean to order a fucking burger last night? No, I did not. So why are you copying of, oh, I really didn't feel like a steak. You thought you were ordering a steak. I wanted something steak-like. <laughs> Stupidest yeah. thing I've ever heard. It is insane. In my life. No man sits there and eats a hamburger <laughs> patty on the boss's credit card. I don't know. I don't. For some reason, I said I saw a chopped sirloin. I was like, okay, that's probably a variation of a steak. I'll have the steak. Then why uh, would you lie and say I didn't want a steak just what? a second ago? No, I'm, I wanted a variation of a steak because I wasn't that hungry. What is a fucking variation of a steak? There is only beef. That's what a steak <laughs> is. There's no. Uh, what do you want? Plastic steak. Here's why he's changing his story now, Ronnie. Yeah. Because now he can say, I had no appetite. Right. Now he can say, now he can add this to the list of symptoms. Right. Because he wants so bad in his heart of hearts to be terminally <laughs> ill. Is that what you want? You want to hear that you have a brain tumor? No, I just didn't want... I I didn't want like you know the big porterhouse steak. I, <laughs> no one said get the porterhouse for two. <laughs> no. You feigning goat maniac. Al, you're on Ron and Fez. Yeah, you know possums actually faint. You know when they get scared. Well, yeah. you know what? There is an interesting uh, point to that. Last night was supposed to be a big night for Earl. He was supposed to say, "I'm going to ask for things that I need," and I'm going to tell you the truth. You know, anyone who says I'm really not interested in my career, they're probably pretty fucking right on. Because I don't give a shit. I want to come in, talk a little bit, and leave. But Earl needs, I don't know, supplies or extra computers and staffing. I don't know what he needs. So the deal was last night, Earl, ask for these things that you feel like you can't ask for. Fez and I will back you up. And then we put, um, you know, we put Elo on the fucking defensive. Then it's up to him whether Earl can have these things or not. Earl never says a word as he's waiting for this. You know, you start to hear Earl complaints. You guys don't stay in touch. I thought you were coming back to D.C. Uh, we never hear from you. Uh, we've offered all kinds of trips for the show. We never hear back. Basically... There's, you know, Earl doesn't want to deal with unpleasantness. And I understand that, but it starts to build up after a while. Time after time of all these things come up, and they're all in this dark closet of Earl's mind. So as he's starting to get exposed, <laughs> instead of talking or saying, no, here's what I thought, the fucking swivel head starts... The fading goat goes down, and it gives him a reason, again, not to deal with it, much like the possum, Fez. Oh, yeah, just plain dead. Uh-oh, there's management. I better put all four paws up to the sky. They thought you were dead, Earl, so <laughs> I think that you won. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> At least you know, from a career standpoint, you came off as dead. I can't tell <laughs> anyone listening how embarrassing this meeting was because I was across the table from Earl, Ronnie was next to him, and at one point, no lie, I see Ronnie put his hand over on Earl's jacket and try to pull him back into an upright position. Honestly, he was acting like it wasn't happening. No, Just I, acting like, well, yeah, we're going to get to work on that, Elo, and acting like Earl is awake when he was out on his fucking ass. I go, there's Elo there and Wiki, and there's Ron having to play Willie Tyler to <laughs> Earl's Lester. And this wasn't something I you know, necessarily planned on. In a way you have, because you're not dealing, Earl. You won't talk to these people, and then when the light shines on you, <laughs> you fucking faint. It's insane. Your head was on the table, literally. And right on the mashed potatoes. There was some mashed potatoes up on the top of your head. Again, there wasn't something I, you know... I talked to him this morning about it. He tells me he doesn't remember much from the meeting. Oh, there, you got to be kidding me. No, there's, a, the last, uh, there's like a chunk of the last portion of that meeting. I have zero recollection. The last part of the meeting was Earl talk. Hey, how come we don't hear from you guys? We, you never got back to us about this guest, about this trip. Yeah, I mean, I, again, it was just, at one point, 
I sat down and it just became this big fat blur, and I couldn't figure out why. And I just, I still can't figure out what's was going it on. when you heard "What's up with Earl"? <laughs> why can't? Why don't we hear back? I mean, honestly, that portion I don't really remember. I re I'm being Smart. completely honest with you. This is your Iran Contra. I have no recollection. The uh, the the fainer cannot be held responsible. It's a defense, a rope a dope times ten defense that no one's ever dealt with before. I guess you cannot hold a, a feigning man responsible. Oh, that's no. it. Oh right, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that'll stand up in any court. Earl won't be able to stand up in court, but the, that theory will. So Earl, they, I mean, uh, before XM has thought us as bizarre. Now they just think we're off the fucking rails. They just think we're out of our minds and don't give a shit about our future. I mean, Elo actually had to say his Earl all right last night. And I went like this. Oh, Earl, you know Earl. <laughs> Good old Earl. Hey, you know, you want to lie and say he's on heroin. You want to make up some kind of a fucking bird story so it looks a little cooler. Like, oh, he was up on 125th shooting heroin with jazz junkies. Anything that makes it seem like we're a little bit in uh, show business. Um, Josh, Josh, you're on a fez. Hey, instead of weekend at Bernie's, it should have been lunch with Earl. It basically <laughs> was, like, and we all walked him out of that. We all had to pick him up and walk him out. We have to tie our ankles to Earl so it looks like he's walking. Uh, Josh, you're on a run of fez. What's up, Ron and Fez? What's going on? Yeah. I think we need to change Black Earl's name to Blackout Earl. It, Blackout Earl would not be a bad name for you, Earl. I'm not planning on any series of blackouts anytime soon. You've already had it. They've been happening. All right, this started when we had to go get our weird picture taken and go up the freight elevator. You passed out on your feet then. Then you fainted four times when Mikey D's dick broke. And then another... A uh, big faint, and now massive loss of fucking memory because Elo and Wiki had a little fucking line of things that Ron and Fez have disregarded over the years. And quite frankly, it's stuff that Fez and I didn't even know about. It. Now, do I think it's bad that you're trying to say, oh, we don't want that guest or we don't want to do that uncomfortable thing? No, I, I'm not saying that. That would be your discretion. But you still have to deal with it. You can't feel like the best way to get out of things is to go underground. I, 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 I'm ready to face these things. I'm ready to face whatever's wrong with me, quite honestly. You fainted at the table. <laughs> ready came and left. It was your opportunity to bring up staff, staffing, shit that you need for the office. This was your time. What did I tell you before? I go, be prepared for this meeting and... Fez and I will just back you up like we've all talked about it. They didn't hear a word. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. And I had it, I had notes, I had it in my head, I had everything ready to go. And then, Where are your notes? Um, I could actually, they're right here. Hold on. Was number one on the notes faint? If so, mission accomplished and great meeting. <laughs> uh, Chris, Chris, you're on a Fez. Hey, guys. Hey, in defense of Earl, hey, uh, Earl, maybe you need to get some uh, social anxiety checked out, man. Maybe some Zoloft will help that shit. All right, Earl, maybe. what you need to do, because you've had everything checked by medical doctors, right? Yes. You need to see a therapist. Yes, I'm... Um, and break the word down, because I don't want it to make you nervous. Therapist, the rapist. Think of it that way. You're going to go there and bring up your childhood rape. Get that out on the table, deal with it, and then move on and become a person. Apparently, it happened in a steak restaurant. Someone <laughs> raped you with a fucking hamburger, chopped sirloin, <laughs> steak-like material. I was not raped as a child, but I definitely i am considering professional help. Absolutely considering it. It isn't a matter of considering. If you worked in any kind of normal place, if you had fucking bosses that care, you'd be out. Did you notice this as Earl was sitting at the table yesterday before he actually went into full faint? Yeah. As his chin got lower, his knees got higher, and somehow at a, in a restaurant chair, he put himself in the fetal position. Yeah. 
I don't, I don't remember getting into the fetal position. Do you remember when I said to Elo, let me go over this with my fetus? Uh, we're going to check our notes, and then we'll talk later. I go, if you would just give me. I go, I know we're behind on this. Let me get her into the third trimester. See how, wait, let's get his hands to actually start <laughs> to come out. <laughs> right now, I'm waiting for his eyes to form. The problem, Elo, is our producer's a preemie. I was worried you were going to be stillborn right down in the fucking chair, right on the chopped sirloin. He went down like the cord was around his neck. He's got a note over there that says paper clips and fucking stamps. <laughs> I was afraid to say it. Uh, Jim. Jim, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Um, have you ever considered maybe Earl was narcoleptic? Earl, are you familiar with uh, this at all? Um, no, not at all. It's basically, instead of fainting, you would go to sleep at odd times. And the only other narcoleptic I know was a black guy. Really? He's a comic, yeah. Used to fucking fall asleep mid-conversation all the time. That's bizarre. Wake up and start talking again to you. He would only go out for uh, a little while. Eventually, he died in his sleep, bro. That's not a good thing. For me, it was, because I owed him money. I owe him seven fifty. <laughs> And I'm telling you, it was, I was the only person at the funeral giggling. I could not. I was just so fucked. Because it was like winning money, you know? Sure. Being at that funeral. But I used to, I remember as a kid, my... I, as we were lowering the coffin, I had a big bag of bills and I was just fucking, I just <laughs> fanned them out and was just going, bye-bye, bye-bye, you'll never see this. I remember as a kid, I would have like these weird episodes where I would just like fall asleep at just random times, but not in mid-conversation. You, Earl, have what's called fanning goat disease. You're a fucking fanning goat. It keeps changing and changing. The first time he fainted, this has never happened to him before. Now we have a childhood history. I know, right. It's After the rapes. <laughs> Who raped you? Black uncle? No, the Hamburglar. No, I got you, Rolo. <laughs> in some pimp suit. Some brown leather pimp suit. I was never touched as a child. No, not that I know of. I I have to say, in the long career of Earl Douglas embarrassing stuff, that might have been at the top. No, it was not a proud moment at all. I'm I'm embarrassed. I'm thoroughly embarrassed by the whole this whole situation. Have you called those guys? Not yet. I was going to do that after the show. Send them a fucking link to Fainting Goats. There's a YouTube thing. If you yell at one of these goats, they fall over. It's fucking adorable. Here's the videotape of the meeting last night in case you wanted to take some notes from it. <laughs> some transcripts. Do your little goat impression. I liked that earlier. Uh, Clunk. <laughs> Febreze, the fainting goat. So now you're without paper clips and staplers. <laughs> what shall we do? How will we connect our papers together? His, most of his problems have to do with bungling bung things together. <laughs> What all we can do now, Ronnie, is yeah. just press these papers together as tight as we can and hope that they stay. Here's our buddy Bobo. Hey, Bobo. Hi, you buddies. Hey. Hey, I think Earl has a condition that's called vasovagal syncope. It has to do with quick blood pressure fluxes, uh -huh. and one of the triggers is simple inquiry. Like if, if somebody questions somebody else, it can stress them out so much and it can knock them out. Hmm. My wife has this. She faints? Yeah. If you go to her, hey, honey, where's dinner? Boom, she's down. Well, what the first time it happened to her, her dad caught her smoking in her bedroom. Huh. And he gave her a look, raised the eyebrow, and she just went out. So the, the rock, and it, like the rock would make her pass out. Earl, here's yeah. the uh, problem right now. I have to write a note to Wiki and Elo and say, uh, Earl cannot have responsibility. You don't have to write that note. I can definitely handle responsibility. Earl, last night was the night to be responsible. Earl, you can't even be responsible enough to pass Ronnie's note along to Elo and Wiki. He'd eat it. <laughs> you know goats, they eat anything. Just grow, draw, uh, grow a little billy goat beard. I am growing a goatee out just for no particular reason. Hey, where are my tin cans? Did somebody eat those? Uh, Bobo. Yes, sir. On a side note, I haven't brought this up to Fez. I got an email from you that you said if Fez is not happy with his painting of him, 
that you would give it to me? Um, yeah, if that's okay with Fez. I mean, the, the, I would I, love I, to have it, Fez, if you don't want that painting of yourself. Why would I give up the self-portrait? Or not a self-portrait. Who a are you? Do you <laughs> honestly go around telling people you painted that? <laughs> so this portrait of me that we have hanging here in the XM studio. Why would I want to give that up, Bobo? Well, I, I, from our discussion yesterday, I, my understanding was that you hated it. That it was, like, disgusting to you. Oh, Which, uh, oh, Bobo, you read so many things <laughs> into other things. What? Yeah, you read too much into stuff. How's that? Huh? Do I? Yeah. I mean, I, I really, you, you said, like, once the hair left your body, it was, you know, gross to you. And, I mean, I like it being in the studio. I think it's cool. It ended up in that Opie and Anthony graphic and stuff. But uh, Right, it wouldn't I, have done that in my home, that's for sure. But I, Do you I want it or not, Fez? Yes. I'm going to take it. Yes, I want... You are not getting that picture from me, Ronnie. That that picture, it's a portrait of me that Bobo painted, and he actually used my own beard clippings to do the beard on it. Okay, I mean, I guess now I'm really confused. Because I, I just felt from yesterday, I asked you straight up to, you know... Do you not like it? And you said it was weird and it made you uncomfortable. I've never seen a painting done with actual, with the person's actual hair in it. But I'm surprised that's not hanging up over your couch, Fez. I think here it gets a better place of honor. I think more people are going to see it than would in my apartment. I'll tell you something that I don't like, Bobo. Is okay. that ashtray that Fez gave me for Christmas that turned out to be fake. Do not yeah. give that to Bobo. <laughs> I was looking at that. Would you do me a favor, Bobo, and paint a picture on that? Sure. Rip off? You want me to? No, I'm only kidding. Don't paint on that. So, Bobo, he loves it. Okay? Okay, well, uh, thank you. I didn't mean to make a tempest in a teapot. I just, last night I got real worried because paintings are like children to me, and I was like, gosh, it's going to... End up in the trash. Don't paint children. Seriously, and don't fucking throw that in the trash, Fuzzy. Love it. You have to love art. I, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll kiss it. Oh. <laughs> All right, Bobo. Uh, so okay, it's just thanks. a misunderstanding. Yeah, you artist, Bobo. Mm, yeah. yeah, I know. Now I feel like I need therapy again. You're a temperamental lot. All right, we'll talk to you later, buddy. Okay, love you guys. Bye-bye. Right, bye. Putting out fires left and right. Yeah. Well, you should, Fuzzy. Sometimes your little jokes... Yeah? They hurt. I've been on the other side of that. They hurt. Well, I, I, if I hurt Bobo's feelings, yeah. I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to keep a goat on his pins here. What about my feelings? Well, your your feelings were hurt? Yeah. How? When you gave me a fucking ashtray for Christmas. A piece of shit ashtray. This has nothing to do with Bobo's paintings. I'm just saying... <laughs> for myself. It's not time for a laundry list here. It is. Really I want to go over all the things. Me and Earl need to get a couple things <laughs> off our chest. Earl, I would love to go with you to the shrink and let them know everything uh, that's wrong with you and help them get you into the fucking straitjacket. I'm not... Hit you in the neck with a stun gun, you're in the straitjacket, you're off to the black loony bin. I don't want to get knocked out and trinkled. I was like a horse and dragged off to the black loony bin. I, w I honestly think that you belong in a black mental institution. They have those now? You don't want to mix, Fezzy. Oh, yeah. The crazy white people never get on the uh, crazy basketball court. Uh, Marty, you're on Fez. 1446, buddy. What do you say there, my man? hoo -ah! Ronnie, I think you hit it right on the head. ONA knew he was a joke. They treated him like a joke. He didn't pass out. You give him some responsibility, he passes out. He can't handle his job. All right, that's a good point. You never used to pass out when ONA used to tease you. Well, that's, well I had episodes. I used to destroy things and get angry. Is that for the black shrink? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, there was a particular thousand dollar telephone that I took out one time, but I, I used to definitely rage out in a different way. Here's Lucretia. Lucretia, you're on Ron Fez. Yeah, you know what? I just want to say that, you know, I met up with Earl a few years ago, and then I got impregnated. And now I know why my kid walks on all fours and eats pink cans. Because Earl's part goat. He is uh, part goat. 
Now, Dave, why yeah, would you that... write up that this was Crazy Jen doing something? This isn't Jen. I uh, assumed it was a character, uh, but I guess that was the wrong assumption. Yeah, it was. I it asked... was a character, but it wasn't Crazy Jen doing a character. I asked the the person calling, is this Crazy Jen? The, that Lucretia... That definitely was not Crazy Jen. No, no, it was not Crazy Jen. Uh, Dave, feel good that Earl's taking all the fucking arrows today, because oh. you're a moron. And you show up at that meeting last night in a stupid kilt. And are you wearing it today? I have it in my bag. Go get the fucking kilt on. I do not want to do a show you're not wearing your kilt. Boy, this is not a fucking good team today, Fez. No, Eastside Dave, he got a kilt for Christmas from his brother. And for some reason decided to wear it to the management meeting last night at the restaurant. So after that, I said, you got to wear a kilt every show. Not keep a kilt in your bag every show. Anyone oh, can do that. Team. This team. And, you know, I understand, you know, there's phone screening that has to be done here. Mm -hmm. One one rule that I figured I didn't have to bring up to people, don't assume every caller's crazy Jen. And type that in. You're on the warpath today, huh, Fez? I really, really am. You take out Earl, Dave, Bobo's beautiful artwork, me with the ashtray. You're on a rampage. Maybe I've just had enough. Maybe I've had it up to here, and I'm pointing at my throat. Oh. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> Normally, when you say I've had it up to here, I thought, and your throat, I thought it had to do with cocks. No. Uh, Donnie. Donnie, you're on Ronnie Fez. Hey, Ronnie. Fezzy. Yeah. Uh, Earl, I had this about three years ago. I was a year and a half of just passing out for no apparent reasons. You gotta suck it up and just realize that it's psychosomatic. Go get some Prozac. You'll feel better. Go talk to somebody. Everything will be all right. So I have this real aversion to re to drugs or taking any drugs. I'm totally all. Uh, I hate taking pills. I hate taking antacid pills, but I have to take those. Why don't we do this? We drill a hole in the top of your head. Let some of that steam out. I'm not, not gonna let my brain ooze. Would you be out. willing to do this, leeches? We cover your body in leeches, get rid of the bad blood. I like the steam idea, like it's the 5 o'clock whistle blowing. Ah. And then it'll be like this. Let me get right back to you on that, Mr. Logan. <laughs> All right, Dave, come on in here. I don't know, understand why the fucking kilt wasn't on today. Where was the kilt before? Well... I've been a little ill, and I think <laughs> I'm showing a little, <laughs> little, little balls. Yeah, the balls were sticking out. I didn't have the kilt on. The slit should be on the side. Dave. Yeah. That's your fucking uh, thing now. Okay. That's your brand. You're the guy in the kilt. I Yesterday, Italian women from Rome, Fez, stopping him on the street, getting pictures of him in his fucking dress. I, it was just, it was breezy and rainy, so I, I brought the kilt to change into it. You know who you look like? Yes. Axel Rose. Really? Yeah, remember when he went through the kilt stage? Oh, well then I'll definitely keep wearing it. That's your work uniform but now. But I don't want to have to look over and go, where's the kilt? Put on the kilt. It was only because it was it was very hectic this morning. Computers were crashing, and it was, Earl locked himself in a room away from everyone. It was really weird. By the way, you didn't say a word during the meeting last night. I did. I said a couple of things. What did he say? Did you hear him say anything? Um, he said those potatoes look really good. I heard that much. I offered uh, Elo the uh, potatoes, and we made eye contact. Business stuff, you idiot. I thought, uh, how about Ultimate Fighting Championship? Talk to him about, like, Tito Ortiz. Yes, that had nothing to do with business. That was you <laughs> seeing something on TV. It's crazy fucking talk. Luckily for you, Earl fainted <laughs> and covered up the fact that your balls were hanging out in your, of your dress. <laughs> uh, Jones, Jones, you're on Fez. Hey, hey, buddy. Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, Earl, I, you know what? I never remember... Uh Billy Staples ever passing out at a big meeting? I thought you were the uh, the big better producer. That's true, Earl. No, Billy. Yeah, Billy would have just drank himself, everyone under the table. At that we meeting. would have had a fucking reason then. Then we would have said Billy got drunk and fucked up. Not Billy was sober and fucking fainted. <laughs> you are acting like a drunk without drinking. You know, a goat shouldn't put down anyone else. I don't think you can look down on one other life form on this planet. I hate that. I mean, you have to call me the fainting goat. 
Uh, we probably wouldn't if you didn't faint, especially at management meetings. Hey, John, John, you're running Fez. Hey, guys, hey, this is Fez. Hey, Fez, we all know how tight that wall of the years is, man. How about uh, considering uh, auctioning off that picture on runningfez.net for some of the fans, brother? I bet it go for thousands. Oh, I'm sure it would, but I'm not willing to part with it. It means just too much uh, to me from the artist Bobo. I'll go out of my way and I'll sell that ashtray I got for Christmas. Do not sell the ashtray I got you. I don't even know where it is now. I saw Bronx Johnny with it earlier. Yes. Why is it in there all the time? Uh, we wanted to keep it safe. We we said to put it in the back office. So. Do me a favor. I don't want anything to happen to it. All right. Put it in that trash can and I'll pick it up later. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You'll forget. Put it in that trash can right there. All right. No, right. don't put it in there. there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Get that out of there. Oh, I cherish it. Belongs that way, if home. I want to lay in the trash and smoke <laughs> a cigar later, I've got an old time ashtray. You never do that. Not walking, yet. You know, walking out of the um, elevator last night, Earl said he was going to faint again. So now it's just this thing about elevators, elevators. Are starting to make you faint. Ever since we took that fucking service elevator up to the air conditioning duct to get our pictures <laughs> taken. You got weird there. That day he stopped speaking altogether. Yeah. You want comatose. Heaven forbid they ever start serving chop steak in an elevator. Yeah. He may never wake again. He was like it was like the movie Death Wish and he was our raped daughter. <laughs> yeah, I remember just getting off the elevator and then everything just went crazy. Everything just went really weird. Like I was aware you but I wasn't. You say things go crazy like it actually happened. It's all in your brain. No, but I was feeling fine. I was like, oh, it was. I was feeling the way I usually feel, and then I was just. Then one moment, it was just gone. I was just. I was not aware of what was happening around me. Oh, uh, then again, it was, uh, seconds later, it felt like you were five, and your uncle was raping you again. <laughs> I was not raped by my uncle. That was on the down low, brother. And I asked him, what, so what is going on with you? What happened? And he said, the last thing I remember is ginger ale, Dave. That's actually what he said. The last I, thing I remember is ginger ale. No, nah, I, I don't remember saying that. I think you're lying through your teeth on that one. No, I swear. Uh, Jake, Jake, you're on the Run of Fez show. Go ahead, Jake. Oh, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that if uh, Earl was narcoleptic, he's in the right profession. I used to have a shop teacher back in high school that had that uh, disorder. It was uh, pretty interesting. So maybe that's it, Earl. Yeah, should be working around kilns? I don't know. I mean, but I, I don't know. Maybe you I may be having black panic attacks. Oh, I'm. Have no you ever doubt. heard of that, Fez? No, I've never heard of a black panic attack. It's uh, like a panic attack, right? But for black people. Oh, black panic attacks. Wow. Panic, panic attacks. I'm sorry, Dressy. What did you say? You can combine them. Panic uh, attacks. Yeah, I got that part. Oh, they even segregate panic attacks? I do. <laughs> See, Earl, you don't seem to understand the common denominator in your fainting spells because you're always like, you don't know when it's going to hit you. You don't understand why it's happening. It could happen in a restaurant and in an elevator. All of those times uh, involved show responsibility. You might be allergic to the works. <laughs> Every time I get the works... I'll get the shakes. <laughs> That's not necessarily true. I had one waking up one morning. Where I just, mm -hmm. Time I just, for work. You don't get it on a Saturday. No, it wasn't Then you're Saturday. off to the fucking track. <laughs> 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 Couldn't be any happier. Tommy, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Yeah. Uh, how our girls got Tommy, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Tommy? Yeah? Tommy? See me. Hello? Tommy, you're on the Ron yeah. Fez show. Yeah, can you hear me? Tommy, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Tommy, can you hear me? Hello? 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 Touch me. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, Tom, Tom, you're on Ron Fez. How are you, buddy? Hey, not too bad, man. Maybe it's all just a gimmick, and uh, Black Earl is just trying to get on disability like all the other brothers. See you. Not all the brothers are on disability. Earl, are you going for disability? 
No, I'm totally oh, not. Oh, God, Wesley Autry, would you please stop telling the story? <laughs> well, Every time I turn around. Wesley Autry is the subway hero in New York City. He jumped on the tracks to save a man that had fallen down there as the train came in. Where was he when the Puerto Rican baby fell? <laughs> he was at Letterman, I believe. Thank you. No further questions. <laughs> I'm so mad about that. You know that's my dream. They catch a Puerto Rican baby. Yeah, that happened in the Bronx yesterday in New York. Uh, two men, Julio Gonzalez and Pedro Navarez, they, uh, they're being called heroes after catching a three-year-old who fell from a fourth-story fire escape. Jesus. That's a nice grab. Four stories, basket catch. That's my dream. That is my dream. So the, the kid weighed about 43 pounds. Uh, I guess Pedro was going to catch him first, and he took the he got knocked out of his shoes when the kid hit him in the chest, knocked the wind out of him. But the other guy, uh, Julio, was able to catch him bouncing off of Pedro and cradle him. You know, they had, a, uh, they had video of the fireman catching a baby that the mother threw about uh, six months ago. And I would love to have somebody get it on video when I caught a baby. Ah, damn it. it! Just it's so frustrating, you know, when you have a dream, and you're just not there for it, you know. I don't see why that first guy is being called a hero. He dropped the baby. Then the other guy came in and got the rebound, like yeah. a little. If I was the post, I would have put up hero and zero, like Johnny Bench. <laughs> when remember that one guy dropped the ball and Johnny was able to scoop it up on first baseline. Uh, yeah, I think you're talking about Pete Rose, Pete my Rose. friend. Pete Rose. And, and uh, again, that was the fucking 1980. Oh. World Series, and I don't want you fucking that up. Oh, he drives me crazy. Bob Boone dropped the mm -hmm. fucking ball. Who's there? Showboat and Pete. Charlie Hustle makes the fucking grab. Nice. But what are we here? Johnny Bench getting fucking credit for it. Ow. Always back to the big red machine. Ouch. I'm not going to have a guy... Sit here in a dress and try to explain a 1980 World Series to me. It's a kilt. What? It's a kilt. Really? That's a kilt? Yeah. You mean you can make ceramics in that? No, it's a uh, fashionable, it's a, it's a dress of honor in Scotland. <laughs> a and dress Ireland. of honor. <laughs> a, a, a piece of clothing of honor. Yeah. It's a fucking army blanket you wrapped around you. People wear these to weddings. This is like the bottom of a tuxedo. You can wear the top of a tuxedo. This is the bottom. This is a, a very dignified way of dressing. You know what you need on top is a halter. Just wear a little halter top. <laughs> now, with the baby that uh, fell out of the off the fire escape yesterday and got saved... I just want to say this again, Fuzzy. I don't want any of these fucking remarks about the 80 fills. Oh, I understand. I don't want to hear Smitty's name come up out of you. So with this, it was the babysitter who opened the window because she was having a cigarette. That fucking team is important to me, Fez. Oh, I know. Yeah. They got me through a bad time. <laughs> the 1980s and 90s. And so the, the babysitter then decides to go uh, take a shit and leaves the window open. And the baby crawls out in that moment while she's on the toilet uh, crapping out her ham sandwich she had for lunch. She was actually taken to police headquarters. It was a mistake. Let's not act like she fucking threw a kid out the window. Uh, Todd, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, what's up, boys? Yeah. Hey, Ron, um, I think it's time for a little restructuring. I mean, I like Dave and I like Earl, but damn, he's just fucking up. He sucks. I was hoping the year 2007 would be good. I mean, I used to, I listen, used to listen to the Ron and Fez show and awesome fucking guests would come in and hypnotist, I'd laugh, and now it's just Dave fucking up, Earl fucking up, Dave fucking up every goddamn day. Yeah, it's a lot of truth to that, Earl. Restruct I'm serious. I mean, I love your show, but Earl and them, they, I mean, they, your show could be fucking awesome, and it used to be. It could, yeah. It, it really could be, Earl. Mm -hmm. Imagine this show without Earl. Just imagine the show with every fucking piston. All fucking clicking, everything happening. I'm a good piston. Detroit. You put the piss in piston. He puts the piss in his own butt. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. Dave, you're starting to, you know. What? Every time I see you now, I just... I see the fucking Kansas City Royals. I see fucking George Brett 
and his fucking big ass problems attempting to take this series away. What well, ain't going to happen? It didn't happen then. It ain't going to happen now. All right, I apologize for the Philly stuff. Don't apologize to me. Apologize to Manny Trio. Right now, Dave. I apologize to Manny Trio. Say it to him directly. Dear in, Manny. In, a, in yeah. Espanol. Manny, mi mucho gusto. Uh, mi apalo yo. What? <laughs> now you're just me adding too. O. Me, uh, me sorry, yo. You're just putting O at the end of English words thinking that's Spanish. Sorry, O is in Spanish. No. All right, well, you fooled me, Dave. Well, I took a couple years in high school. Shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now do a curtsy in your uh, kilt. So you're bilingual? Yes, I am. When's the last time you sucked a dick? Mm, I that, you know, you need one matter. Just here, don't right? think it means the same thing. Think bank bilingual, speaking two languages. It's all the same to you, Dave. Mm. I think it's all working out, though. Uh, Will, Will, you're on Fez. Hello, my boys. Hey, buddy, that's what? the other guys. What the fuck boys. is? No, you didn't that's all when I. I don't want you okay, to steal bo bo boys from them. I'm sorry, Ron. I'm sorry, Bob. What the fuck is Dave doing wearing a kilt? He's not a Scotsman. Dave, yeah, well, how, how's the kilt coming? You said that's your family dress. This is, yeah, my <laughs> the, the family emblem. Uh -huh. and His dad I, was married in it. It's a dress, but this is the colors of the family flag. And my brother bought this for me for Christmas. That's beautiful. And uh, I brought it in to show it to you. You know, now it's, it's becoming your thing. Yeah, and uh, I hadn't necessarily planned on being in the everyday occasion, but I guess this is my lot in life. But I'm proud. Have you of worn it. it on Pal Talk yet? No, I'll wear it tonight. I'll yeah. wear it on Pal Talk tonight for the people at Pal Talk. Uh, Eleven thirty-five. Razzle dazzle! It's board gossip with Eastside Dave. A little gossip, a little. A little chat, a little Starting off, it's board gossip time. And starting off with Pal Talk, the gossip team spotted Dimebag Sinister getting friendly with Eagle Connell last night. Dimebag Sinister, the girl in this story, was caught giving oral sex to Eagle in plain view of everyone. Ooh la la. Guess when it comes to birds... Dimeback likes to ruffle feathers. Cock feathers. Speaking of blowjobs, it appears Milf of Pal Talk was also caught s going south on a mysterious man whose identity is not known. Eat cha cha. I know elevators go down a lot, but I didn't realize so does all of Pal Talk. Hopping over to RonFez.net now, where singer-songwriter Perry Noid is more pissed than a Times Square urinal. Perry writes about rival parody songman Bobo, That fucking Tainted Black song sucks. Please don't play that song anymore, especially by someone who's a garbage man. End quote. Yikes. Speaking of garbage cans, maybe Perry should change his name to Oscar from now on, because he is a grouch. And now for Who Could It Be? Who can it be now? Who can it be now? From Pal Talk, it seems poster Hummer Tuesdays is not too fond of one popular internet moderator. Some of the things Tuesdays has called this girl have been, quote, bitch, know-it-all, ego bitch, and power bitch, end quote. This columnist is surprised at these comments because he knows this moderator girl to be happy and skilled at typing. I wonder, who could it be? Pedaling over to Whackbag now, looks like a Whackbag secret has been uncovered by the gossip team. Apparently there is a special VIP room where elite members can write and laugh with one another, separating themselves from the common folk of Whackbag. I hope members of the VIP room know the name of a good kitty adoption service because their cat is out of the bag. Crawling back to FBA, where the website is still like Nick Nolte, 
down and out. The buzz is that the site could come back as early as today, but as late as next Friday. Garnering concern and worry from many. This columnist would like to plead with Uncle Inky and Dugout Doug to please get the site back up. Because as the great Charlie Daniels would say, it's my life. It's my life. God was the one to give it. It's my life. And that's today's board gossip. And remember, we're always watching. I wonder if the kilt takes away from it. Ron Fez show. Ron and Fez. <laughs> XM202.